In light of the Brexit vote, is it right that Scotland should be denied a second referendum? <laughs> had quite a bit on this. What a surprise. Uh, Ian, do you want to kick us off on this? Well, I principally don't think there's a mandate for it. And I've always taken the principled view, and I do listen to, uh, look forward to listening to what you've got to say uh, on this issue in the audience th this evening. But I've always taken the principled position that it's Scotland's best interest to be a member of the United Kingdom, and actually the United Kingdom's best interest for Scotland to be part of it. Brexit will be bad. We don't know what's going to happen over the next 11 months. We just all now keep our fingers crossed that things will work out. I don't think they will, but that's a different question uh, altogether. But to then have Scottish independence on top of that, in my view, wouldn't be the equivalent of cutting your nose off to spite your face. It'd be the equivalent of cutting your head off. And I really do think we need some answers to those big questions. All the so wrong So why was Jeremy Corbyn saying he wouldn't, if, 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 if people wanted a referendum, he wouldn't stand in his way? Well, I, I, I thought he was wrong on that. I mean, we're a principally an internationalist party that believes in solidarity. If you disagree with the ends, you should disagree with the means. The last politician who disagreed with the ends but facilitated the means was David Cameron on Brexit, and look what happened. So we just, I mean, we'll disagree on some of these issues, and we have to listen to each other and respect each other's opinions. Um, and there will be people in the audience, people across the country, that think we should have a second independence referendum tomorrow. I think it would be bad for Scotland's interests, not just in the UK, uh, but in the world. And what we need to do is get on to two big things. One, trying to deal with the issues of public services in Scotland that have just got progressively worse for the last 10 or 12 years. And secondly, <laughs> let's have the big, the, the big questions asked. Now, I want a positive discussion about why the UK is good for Scotland, and I also want to be able to exploit why independence would be bad. Let's have that debate rather than talking about the process of whether or not we should have a second independence referendum. Maybe we'll hear tonight what the currency would be the border at Berwick. All the wrong-headed arguments we've had in studios like this for the last two years on Brexit had exactly the same wrong-headed arguments on Scottish independence, and we have to have that debate. Well, here's the person I have a debate with, Joanna. Uh, I'm going to start by <laughs> quoting back at Ian his own words when he supported a second EU referendum, when he said, when circumstances second change, people should be allowed a second vote. I wasn't, that was now a, we had that a, well, just vote. let me finish. Hang, hang on, on back Ian's saying that wasn't his quote, so let's be quote. clear. I was putting David Davis. But did you agree with it? On the 8th, on the 8th of April 2019 in the Commons last year, you said that. You said you were paraphrasing somebody else, David but that's what you said. Yes, but you said in circumstances change, people should be allowed a second vote. Now, I know at the time you were talking about Brexit, but I'm saying the same principle that you were espousing there can apply to Scottish independence. People haven't changed now, in 2014, uh, when people in Scotland voted to stay in the UK, it was a very different United Kingdom they were voting to stay in. One of the central promises of the Better Together campaign was that the way to preserve your EU citizenship was to vote to remain part of the United Kingdom. That is now no longer the case. And we're also faced with the most right-wing government that we've seen in modern times, which Scotland overwhelmingly didn't vote for. And I believe that there is a mandate. The Scottish National Party, which supports independence in the second referendum, keeps winning elections in Scotland, Ian. We won the last election pretty impressively yeah, with 45% of the vote and over 80% of the of the okay. seats. So what do you, do you just what do you just quickly finish this. In, and in the Scottish Parliament, the Scottish Parliament, our democratically elected body for Scotland, has voted to hold a second independence referendum. And polls suggest that the majority of people now want a second independence referendum. And well, indeed, within, the last three, the margin of error, the last, Jenna, the last three polls have showed a majority in favour of independence. But, but they are close, yes. And they're, they're within I believe, the margin of error, so they can't be, they can't be, they're not as, as, as strong as you'd like they're them to close, be, I'm sure. But, but bear, in mind, bear in mind this, Fiona. When we started um, the independence referendum campaign back in 2012, we started at 28% and we went to 45%. Some people think we went up to above 50 and then fell back again because of the vow. We'll never be sure about that. Okay, well, look, let's cut, Jane, let's cut to the chase. Hang on so a minute, let's cut to the chase. The point is to start from a base what, what of 50% like? is pretty promising. Okay. To run your campaign Joanna, from a base of 50%. Let's, yeah. let's, let's cut to the chase. What would you like to have? We've uh, obviously got Nicola Sturgeon, yeah. who, is, who is requesting um, uh, permission, effectively, from, the, the, from uh, the Prime Minister to be able to hold a second independence referendum. You want to go further than that, don't you? Well, I want to make it perfectly clear that I've never advocated a wildcat or what some people call an illegal referendum. 
It would be rather surprising if I did so, given that I'm a senior member of the legal profession and devoted a large part of last year to defeating Boris Johnson in court for doing something unlawful. However, the weight of legal opinion is that it is by no means certain that the Scottish Parliament doesn't have the competence to hold a referendum. So I agree that we should be making sure that the referendum is properly constituted and lawful, but I also agree with Nicola Sturgeon, my party leader, that the weight of legal opinion is that it's not clear that the Scottish Parliament doesn't have the power to pass a bill to hold a referendum. And as Nicola has said, it would be interesting to see that attested. My point is that I don't think the Scottish electorate should be at the mercy of Boris Johnson's say-so. Mr Johnson is a man with a very cavalier attitude towards democracy and, as we saw last year, a very cavalier attitude towards the rule of law. So I'm interested in finding ways in which Scotland can hold a lawful uh, referendum. But I'm more interested in creating the vision and the arguments that will win that referendum. And I think it's important to answer Ian's point. Ian's simply wrong to say uh, that the Scottish uh, government runs uh, poor public services. The facts and figures simply don't bear that out, and I'm, I'm happy to go through them uh, oh, later. I mean, it's I'm also sorry. possible. Well, okay, Joanna, me, it's it, also possible it, to deal with constitutional issues and run the country okay. at the same time. Joanna, there's lots of that hands up, in so lots I, of countries. I, I so, theory, uh, yeah. Can I just come to the audience as well? Yeah. I've given you a long time to talk there. And there are lots of people who want to cut in. Yes, so uh, the man with the glasses there and the dark blue sweater. You say you're going to be having uh, an advisory independence referendum. Who's going to be paying for this? OK, well, well Joanna, I'm going to go that. around the audience first. But I, didn't, I didn't say that. Yeah. I'm going to go around the audience just a bit and then I'll come back to you. Yes, the, the guy in the denim shirt here. Surely as the only remaining Labour MP in Scotland, Ian could see that his party maybe need to change their stance on the independence referendum issue if they want to re-engage with the Scottish electorate. Okay. Put in the back in the T-shirt. Yes, the grey and white T-shirt. Hi, yeah. Um, so you said that the SNP only got 45% of the vote, but I know loads of people that would vote independence but didn't vote for the SNP. OK. And the woman in the purple top with the glasses, yes. Hello, thank you. Um, I fear that Brexit has become a convenient fuel to reignite the independence fire. And I think what Scotland needs to hear is what the economic arguments are for or against independence. So, Tom, Brexit is the, is, is the fuel to the independence fire. So is this, is this going to lie at Boris Johnson's door, responsibility for an independent Scotland? Look, I, I got into politics for a simple reason, which was to serve our communities and to improve the lives of the people we're lucky enough to share these islands with. And when I look around the country and I see the struggles that we're having in making sure that the health service runs well, that schools uh, uh, are delivering the results that we want to see for our kids, when I look at the infrastructure investments we need to see, whether it's the Queensferry Bridge or any other different improvements that we need to get. And I see another argument about a constitutional change that is going to distract politicians from serving people, from serving what we really need, reducing waiting times, treating cancer, educating kids, building the economy. And I see instead another argument about whether or not we should split up our country. I have to say I find it very sad, and I find it very sad because this isn't an economic argument for me. This isn't an argument as to whether or not Scotland is big enough or too small, or whether England would be better or worse without Scotland. For me, this is a fundamental argument about who we are as a people. And when I look around these islands, I, I'm not a foreigner in Dundee. This is our country. We share it. We share it together. And I find it incredibly sad when people talk in a way that splits us and divides us. And I know politicians of all sides do it, so I'm not making a partisan point, but I do find it deeply sad when actually these islands have done an amazing thing over the last 300 years. They've achieved some fantastic results. Yes, we've had some mistakes too, but we have really brought an awful lot to the world. We have been a fantastic force for good over many years. 
And I think it's a real sadness to see that perhaps being thrown away. And do you think, coming to the, to the woman's point there, that any of the, any of the, the blame for this lies with Boris Johnson for pushing Brexit when obviously Scotland voted overwhelmingly to remain? Well, we know from the last referendum in 2014 that the settled will of the Scottish people at the time uh, was clear. Uh, I'm not in a position to lecture. I represent a fantastic community in Kent, and it's not for me to tell the people living here in this wonderful part of the United Kingdom that how they should vote or, or, or what they should do, but I, I listened to those people who led the referendum on both sides, and I, I heard pretty clearly that it was a decision for a generation, and you know, five years isn't okay. a generation. Alex. Um, well, I mean, Tom obviously has done his best to you know, dodge your question uh, there, Fiona, but the answer to it is... Did you spot that? Is, is that <laughs> Did you yeah, spot that, yeah, folks? You know, uh, and he's done so very eloquently and, and elegantly and so on. But the answer to the question is that, yes, of course, Brexit um, is at the heart of this. Um, you know, that if it weren't for Brexit, uh, we would not be talking about this issue because it is Brexit that has put it back on the table. Uh, and if you're an SNP supporter, it has put it back on the table in ways that are quite reasonable and persuasive. And so on, that it does make for the kind of material change in circumstance uh, that would justify a second referendum. So from their point of view, yes, of course, it's uh, perfectly appropriate to to seek another referendum right now. Now, the counter to that is also, however, perfectly respectable and persuasive, which is that five years is not a very long time, and although Brexit may or may not prove to be a terrible blunder, um, or perhaps a great success, who knows, um, the, it is not long enough to justify a set, revisiting a question that everybody promised at the time would be respected uh, for years to come. And so you are talking about competing claims of legitimacy. And at present, at present, you know, this may of course change, um, it is, if you like, on the anti-referendum side that has the ascendancy. Um, the SNP win plenty of handsome election victories and so on, although it is worth bearing in mind the calibre of the people they beat. Um, uh, but that itself is not enough because general elections are about lots of different issues. Um, you know, but when you actually ask people, should there be a referendum, an independence referendum, on the timetable notionally favoured by Nicola Sturgeon, i.e. this year or before next year's Hollywood elections, you find that most people actually say, no, there shouldn't. The most recent YouGov poll on this specific question reported that 30% of the SNP's own supporters do not think there should be a referendum on that timescale, which is why I think the UK government can get away with saying no at the moment. Now, after uh, a 2021 Holyrood election, depending on the results there and so on, the circumstances may change, and that line may become much, much more difficult to hold. But it will hold for now because most people in Scotland don't want a referendum. If 80% of people in Scotland wanted a referendum, it would happen. Um, but for as long as the country is evenly divided, it won't. Good evening. Um, I'd like to ask why the SNP think that Scotland would be better tied to um, France and Germany and wants to separate us from England, Wales and Ireland as a group. Why do you think we'd be better off tied to Germany and France? Well, that's not what we think. We think Scotland would be better off as a member of the European Union. We also think England would be better off as a member of the European Union. And it's my dearest wish to see England come back into the European Union and sit at the top table alongside an independent Scotland. Yes, but hang but on. The but purpose that is, but hang on. What, no, what, the woman, I, what you're very clearly asking yeah. is, is why do you want to separate from, from the rest of the UK when well, you actually well, want we, to join we the don't, don't That's the question we, you're asking, well, isn't it? We yes. don't want to separate from the rest well, of the it UK. Like well, it's kind of implied, though. Well, <laughs> yeah. We want to. Oh, hang on, I'm now really confused. What, you want to stay part of the UK? No, we want to exercise our right to self determination and become an independent but, country. But surely, Joanna, that you'll be arguing well, to leave. Well, that doesn't have to involve separation. We're not leaving something. The United Kingdom is a union of two nations, Scotland mm. and England. If Scotland, it was a voluntary the union. The Northern Irish so hang on, so what is independence? Then, hang on a minute. Yeah. The Act of Union was a union between Scotland and England. If Scotland wishes to withdraw from that union, there will no longer be a United Kingdom in the but way that we understand. The, so the, you reason left. That, the reason that we but want that to separation. remain part of the European Union the is we see Scotland's future in the European Union. Otherwise, Scotland's future 
is tied to England completely at the whim of what English voters choose. You know, and that okay. cannot be right. Not, but not a un... Well, I wish everyone would stop interrupting me and let me answer the question. A union, a, a union cannot be a hostage situation. And that is rapidly what this union is becoming, because Scotland is facing borders being set up on either side of our country, a border with Northern Ireland, thanks to the agreement that's been reached, and a border with the European Union. Now, so we why do we you prefer the European to... Union? That's the question, because we could talk about that yeah, slightly. But, but, but it's not. Uh, no, why we why we prefer the European say. Union is the European Union is a union of equals. In the European Union, if a small country like Ireland has concerns, those concerns are heard as, with as much weight at the top table as the concerns of France or Germany. We saw that during the Brexit process. Contrast that with the way Scotland was treated during the Brexit process, where none of our concerns were taken on board at all. So we prefer a union of equals as opposed to a union of unequals. But, but, we certainly don't Scotland want don't to... see this as a hostage situation. Can I just say, in um, response to that last question, it's not a binary. It's not an either be part of the United Kingdom or be part of the surely. European Union. First of all, what we have to do, if we so choose, if the people of Scotland choose this, is to decide to become an independent nation. And then at that point, we decide whether or not being part of the European Union is what is our, in our best interest. I'm a passionate Europhile. Right now, I would love us to go back into the European Union. But by the time we gain independence, which might be a few years down the road, might be next year, might be whenever, that may not be the best option for us. So it's not an either or, it's not one or the other. It's the decisions that Scotland makes for itself as an independent nation that matters. And I'd just like to ask Ian, what would a mandate look like? <laughs> well, a mandate doesn't a mandate. Well, well, let me just answer the question. Let me just answer the question directly. A mandate doesn't look like 45% as we had on the 12th of December. So John Curtis, the UK's most eminent pollster, said that you couldn't extrapolate a mandate from the 12th of December. So a mandate, according to Nicholas Sturgeon, 18 months ago, was consistent 60% in the polls. And what is remarkable about this whole debate, remarkable, is that the SNP have existed for nearly 70 or 80 years and still can't answer that lady's question. But you're talking about... Still can't but... answer the questions about currency, still can't answer the questions about borders, still can't answer the questions about how we'll fulfil the deficit. So we can all sit here and talk about mandates. But we do have an Let's answer Let's get on to the currency. big issues yeah, around what we actually need to do That's just not and the key. arguments around... Well, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't move no, no. without coming across a fresh uh, sorry, SNP answer on currency. Well, we, we have, have a very clear answer. answer. I want to just finish... Can I just let that... just finish that? Policy. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. You, you, hang on, Joanna and Alex, you're having a private conversation. Fascinating, but there's actually quite a lot. Just a minute. There's quite a lot of us who need to hear what's going on. You're all laughing there, I know. You'll get a word in Edwards in a minute, Val. Would you you're like to continue? You're talking about opinion polls. Yeah. I'm talking here about the mandates of what actually counts, the mandates of when people go to the ballot box. And what's happened? 45%. That's not a mandate. Okay, let's hear yes, from the, the audience. We're talking about has voted. Hang on. That is a mandate. Hang on. The majority of MSPs are surely a mandate. But this takes me back to last year. So all during the whole Brexit thing. Well, we got years there are lots exactly. of this is hands up. We'll talk about <laughs> Thank you. There are lots of hands up, and let's hear from some of you. Where shall I start? In the red T-shirt there at the front. Ian about um, currency and borders. Scotland voted twice to stay in the European Union and avoid borders. And if England voted to leave, borders are on England's fault, not Scotland's fault this time. Currency. We can actually, we've got a functioning economy. We can have our own currency if we so choose to have one. But currency union or not, it doesn't really matter. We'll have a functioning currency. It's not that hard to figure okay. out. OK, the man at the back in the striped top. Um, if there's one thing we've learned from the Brexit process, it's that division doesn't drive progress in this country. Yeah. It's time for us, we've yeah. been told no to independence. It's time for us to stop debating it, instead debate how we're gonna solve the high drug deaths in this country, how we're gonna solve child politi po poverty, sorry, because it's not happening and we need to discuss it instead of independence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a man in the t-shirt, young man in the t-shirt then. Yes, you. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry, actually, no, sorry, just the young man behind you there in the t-shirt, yeah. I just think it's um, quite rich how um, um, in 26, well, before Brexit, a lot of people um, said, oh, we need another referendum on the EU, but um, after, but said in the same face, oh, no, we can't have another referendum on Scottish independence. Yeah. 
Right, which is a point uh, 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 journalism. That's, that's, that's why the second EU referendum was a stupid idea from a Scottish perspective. But it wasn't the, the second hang on, referendum. Hang on, <laughs> The man in the glasses. The SNP said that we're, they're basically at the whim of the English Parliament. So will they abstain from any votes that just involve the English? Sorry, just say that again. Would the SNP say that they're at the whim of the, of the English Parliament? That's not an English Parliament. But they take part in votes that only concern legislation in England. Oh, we're not allowed English to English vote. There's yeah. English, votes for, English votes for English laws. We never did it in the past, and now we're not allowed to. It is a U UK parliament, I think that's worth saying. It's the one with the blonde hair there. Um, as John was saying earlier, um, the UK that Scotland voted to stay in in 2014 is totally different to the one today. But until Brexit's done, how would we know what UK we're voting to stay in? Surely we need to wait, see what happens, and then possibly consider another independence mm. referendum. Okay. And the, the man here in front. I think it's quite bold to make a claim that we can't vote to leave because of borders when that wasn't the case with the EU. We didn't know what was going to happen with borders and we happily left the European Union without knowing what was going to happen. And we've not negotiated the deal yet that's been approved and ratified through both parliaments. So I don't know how we could say. But we in could actual do it. fact, we, we, deserve, then, we, we deserved answers to those questions before we left, and we didn't get any, and we deserve answers part. now. Well, the we left without them, so we're happy to stay without getting them back. OK, the woman there in the black sweater. Yes. Yeah, uh, when I was at school, 45% uh, meant there was 55% on the other side, and 55% of voters voted not for the SNP. Surely that does not give them a mandate. Of course, there's also there's, there's a percentage of don't knows, so that might not have applied to school. I'm not sure. Alex, did you want to come yeah. back in? I mean, you know, at the, at the heart of this and so on is a question of, you know, uh, how do you think about Scotland's future and how do you feel about Scotland's future? Now, at the moment, in terms of a cost-benefit analysis, you know, unionism probably still has the upper hand on the what do you think in terms of the financial arrangements, the technical, practical aspects of independence that have been complicated and made more difficult uh, by Brexit. Um, but in terms of the how do you feel, well, the calculation is changing there too. I think it seems to me there that the SNP and pro-independence forces have the, the upper hand. And again, opinion polling demonstrates that. I think if you look at you know, votes of people, the views of people under the age of 50, you find 60, 65 percent of them now saying that they support independence. That's getting quite close to settled will of the Scottish people type territory. Um, and the problem for unionism is that the gap on what do you think, if you like, the, the hard-headed calculation has been narrowing. Um, while the gap on the how do you feel has been widening, and in neither case is the direction of travel working in unionism's favour. Uh, and unless it finds ways to address that, um, then unionism has a long-term problem, a medium-term problem, and quite possibly a short-term problem too. Uh, about, has your position changed on this in terms of the head versus the heart? Well, um, I have to say, in, in the run-up to the 2014 referendum, I swithered for a long time, on the one hand, on the other hand, as Ian says, you ask questions, neither side could give me a coherent answer. And really, the basis on which I made my decision then, and I think it remains the same now, is I looked at what the Scottish Parliament, not just the SNP, but the parliaments in Scotland had done since Holyrood began in 1999, and I looked at what Westminster had done in that same time period, and I knew where my heart lay, and it was actually the same place as my head lay, that what was best for people, people in Scotland, had been better served by what had been done in their parliament than the people of the country as a whole by what had happened in Westminster. And that was the basis on which I made my decision, and it remains the basis. Um, I have a feeling that this is a, a topic we will be discussing for quite yes. some time, actually, uh, over, over the next months, years. I have no idea. We will find out to come. <laughs>